the book was dedicated. She wanted to, she knew before she passed that this, that I was going to do everything I could to turn this story into a book. So she said that if, if you do that, would please dedicate the book, not to a family member, but that would have been great too, she said, but she wanted to dedicate it to the crew of the boat that she came over from, uh, came over from uh, Norway. Uh, the trip was on the IS, uh, USS, not USS, just the SS Ivernia. Uh, it was a canard ship and it, it departed Liverpool, England. Uh, when you left Norway back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, you couldn't go directly from Norway to the States. Almost everybody went to, uh, to Liverpool. And you'd, you'd go there uh, from her little village in a uh, in just a small boat and then get a, a little larger boat to England. You'd land at Hull, England, H-U-L-L, -L, and that was kind of the drop-off point. And then she had to take a train to Liverpool. And when she left Norway, it was with her, uh, her brother, uh, Rasmus, and uh, her sister, Bertha, uh, three of them came over, and um, Grandma was the one who had really planned the trip. She had an older brother also, but he had already departed by this time, and so wasn't around to help her plan, so she did that. The reason she dedicated the book to this, the crew of this ship was not only because she met a lot of people on boat that the crew that she just loved. There was a Norwegian-speaking uh, uh, lady there who attended to the Norwegian passengers. But the ship was destroyed by the Germans in, in uh, 1917, uh, and the, the whole crew was lost. Everybody died aboard the ship, and the, many of them were still there from when Grandma left. So she had read about it, and she said it was terrible to hear that, and she wanted to dedicate her book to the people that brought her to America. So that was that. But we were lucky enough to get a copy of the manifest, so there was no doubt in exactly when day she left and who went with her, and. Uh, when you look at this list, as I have done, there's also a lot of friends of my grandmother that also went to Minnesota. Uh, it was obvious that uh, they had talked about the trip and a lot of other people decided to go with her. So there were a lot of people on the Gustafsons and Iversons and, and uh, on the manifest. So that was kind of a nice find. Uh, Olaf is the uh, the oldest of the children, uh, her sibling. Uh, he came over, as I say, a few years before. He was a, a carpenter. Uh, Bertha came with Carrie. Uh, Carl and Anna, these two on the bottom uh, left, uh, were from another mother, uh, same father, but uh, Anna and Carl were uh, from uh, Carrie's stepmother. Uh, You'll read about it in the book if you read it, but it, it, she was a very kind of a nasty lady. Uh, she, Carrie didn't care for her and none of the kids were very fond of her. But her mother had died when Carrie was just a very young girl. And as I said earlier, her father, Carrie's father, my, my great grandfather was, uh, was uh, absolutely, a, had a medical depression. I mean, he, he, today he probably could have been cured medicinally, but uh, just two years after, Carrie uh, came over here, he committed suicide on the farm. Kind of a terrible story, but uh, that was one of the reasons she left because the, the, the family had just kind of really suffered for his problems. Carl, uh, just to mention uh, something about him, was a very, very brilliant young man. Uh, he probably was, I mean, I, I have no way of knowing, but could have probably been classified a genius, had a, again, a photographic memory. He wanted to go to medical school. Uh, he came over uh, a couple years after Carrie did with Anna, uh, Grandma Thorson sponsored them. But Carl, uh, just before he was to enter the university, uh, was bitten by a mosquito and got uh, encephalitis and died, not died, That's, he died eventually, but years and years later. But he was in a kind of a semi coma his whole life. Just uh, my mother and I would go visit him by bus. With mother would take fudge, and Carl would love her fudge. Uh, Carl was also a very accomplished uh, violinist, and uh, even in this 
as I say, kind of a semi-coma condition. He was still able to walk, but he was out of it. But he carried that violin around constantly. He never let go of the violin. So just a, a wonderful, wonderful man, but what a sad story. Uh, Anna uh, passed away young too after having a, several children of, uh, of breast cancer. Uh, Carrie was the, was the surviving sibling. She was the only one who lived uh, uh, and um, quite a story there. Uh, now, the book is laid out with obviously a, a preface, and uh, but then what I wanted to do in this book was first tell people, all right, who who are who am I, and who who are, what is my family background. So the book was laid out the Kirkite family, where, who way back it takes her great great grandfather and grandmother talks a little bit about them, a lot about her grandmother Karen. Uh, so when I, you know, mentioned all those things about who the Kirkites were, then the next part of the book is where we came from. So it's a little bit about Norfjord, and uh, if we were in person here and we could see each other and talk, I'd love to be able to ask you how many have been to this part of Norway, Norfjord. Uh, it's between Trondheim and, and Bergen, the fjord, kind of mid in the spoon of the, of the Norwegian geography. But uh, I thought I'd take you on just a short tour of, uh, of, of the Norfjord stream area. This is the glacier fed stream. This is my grandfather, Carrie's husband's church. That's the Lowen Czech. And uh, we were in that, saw the church records with the, his christening in there. And that screen from the air. Lake Lowen. That's the Alexandra Hotel that you got about a half second view of. She worked there as a chambermaid. This is where the rock slide occurred here on this mountainside. Many of her relatives died in the rock slide. I love Norwegian horses, real stocky horses. I wonder how many have had lingonberry jam in the group. It's a great jam. Well, I don't think there's any part of Norway that isn't beautiful, but I think uh, I think uh, Norfjord certainly is right up there in a beautiful area. So I've, I've taken then through the who who the Kirkites were and where they're from in, in in that area. They were very proud of the the history of Norfjord. Uh, they, my grandmother's uncle, 
helped uh, in the dig of one of the Viking ships that uh, it's called the Mickelbust Farm Viking ship. And uh, it's uh, quite a story there too. And she, her grandmother was able to tell the whole story about how that dig went. And she also could tell the story about uh, the time that uh, her grandmother's um, mother suffered with leprosy. Uh, that's also in the book. In Norway, as you might have heard, back in the early 1800s, mid to early mid to 1800s, uh, had a terrible problem of leprosy, and uh, there was no way to treat it locally there. So they had to take her great grandmother into Bergen, and she died, of course, in the hospital there in Bergen. Uh, now it's a museum in Bergen, a, the leprosy museum. Not exactly the most fun to go through it, but it's it's history and it's 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 worth a look at if you've been if you are going there. So anyway, the rest of the book and is a is kind of a chronological. Uh, uh, it is kind of like a diary, I guess, because I I didn't know any other better way to tell the story other than just, all right, now you've landed in uh, in uh, America. Uh, so how did your life go? And so we we we, we took it just this way. Uh, I wanted to hear everything she had to say, her memory about the 1880s, and on it went, uh, decade by decade. Uh, this picture, uh, it kind of, I always think of the way she made it sound, that her grandmother and her talking, uh, they were really buddies, they were really close. The grandmother's name was Karen Venus. Uh, and uh, after uh, Carrie's mother died, uh, uh, Karen came to live with the family, and uh, so she really got to know her grandmother more than her mother, because she was very young when uh, Carrie was very young when her mother died. And uh, again, her grandmother had this phenomenal memory, and uh, she must have been a character too. Uh, uh, her grandmother was, and uh, told all these stories about it. But this is kind of the way I'm picturing it. So when uh, the book uh, title, of course, kind of gives away one of the reasons she left Norway, just a lack of things to do, I guess. Uh, but she spent being the oldest daughter and being uh, a female, you know, the fact of the matter is the people that would go up to the setter, setter uh, to milk and, uh, and watch over the cows and the goats were the young ladies of the family and uh, she'd go up there and milk and make butter and cream and that's where the animals would uh, graze because there really wasn't much grazable land. Um, oops, we'll start, well, now I'm going, how do you go back, I guess. Keep your hands off the keyboard. Um, so the, uh, the setter was a place that she kind of didn't like very much, but uh, you'll uh, read that one of the most amazing things in her life that she was so proud of occurred at the Setter in uh, 1893. Uh, she was uh, singing. She had a great singing voice and she was up there doing her songs and it would echo off the mountains. And uh, one day she was up there in the middle of summertime and uh, behind her, she saw this old man in a black suit with a tie, string tie. And she thought that's a very strange thing to be seeing up here in the mountains. And uh, he didn't say anything, but he just gestured to keep singing. He wanted to take notes, obviously. So she did and uh, you know, it lasted a good part of an hour, I guess. And finally she just quit singing, her voice gave out, I guess. And he left, he just walked away. And uh, it was, it turned out, uh, that uh, that weekend when she was in the village, uh, they said that Edvard Grieg had been up there. So that was a an amazing thing for grandma to think about that she was singing a song that he was taking notes on. Um, Bill DeRoach uh, said before we got started this evening that one of the ways that Grieg really changed his way of composing music was that before he started roaming through the small fjords and the villages of Norway, he was more into uh, kind of more standard romantic uh, music, uh, kind of um, 
not much different than some other composers of the era, but he fell in love with the uh, folk songs. And uh, so that's how we get uh, uh, many of the songs that he has written. And they're, uh, the, uh, they're all folk tunes, basically, and beautiful. Composer, but not much social skills, apparently. He didn't, uh, didn't have a lot to say to her up there, so he didn't even introduce himself. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's, that's really good. Good friends with Ole Bull, the great violinist, and uh, she was so proud of that fact. This building you see in the picture, uh, the, the large building on the hill there, the white one, that is the Hotel Alexandra. The other thing that she remembered so well, uh, being a chambermaid in that hotel, she actually left the house when she was 17, left her home and to live in the hotel. Uh, and uh, she was so surprised one day after she'd only been there a few weeks to know that uh, Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany was going to be landing at the dock there and staying at the hotel. And he would do this for several years in a row. He loved Norfjord and uh, she ended up being his chambermaid. And uh, one of the things I say in the book is that she always said that uh, he gave her a compliment one day. He said, you're the only one who I know that has seen me with my mustache down. Usually he had twisted and then it would curl up, but she saw him, I guess, uh, with his mustache down. So he, she was uh, very proud of that fact. It's uh, the, the Hotel Alexander is still very much alive. It's beautiful now. Uh, they've expanded it obviously uh, greatly, but it's right there uh, between Strin and Lowen. Uh, my grandfather, Carrie's husband, came from Lowen and she came from Strin. He also worked at that hotel and that's actually where they met. She, he was a carpenter and when there was no carpenter jobs needed, uh, he would also be asked by the hotel to take uh, tourists out in the boat there to uh, drive or to row them around the fjord. So uh, they, they fell in love and uh, he went off to Minnesota a little early, a couple of years before uh, Carrie did, to get a house and get situated, a place to live. And then she arrived in 1903. 